Hello and welcome to this skill tutorial. I'm Renaud from Momantins and today we're going to have a look at the MMF player component. So um, this is a new system. Uh, it got introduced in field version 3.0, which just released, and it's a new way to play feedbacks. It's basically the new version of MM feedbacks and the one that should be preferred from 3.0 and onwards. So before we dive into all the new stuff, uh, I just wanted to show you one new feature get you excited about uh, what's in this new version. So I'm in the field templates gun demo scene, uh, one of the new scenes. And here I have two floating guns with a simple script that detects uh, mouse down on the game object. So just to find the demo and when uh, mouse down is found, uh, basically it calls play feedbacks method on the MMF player. And so when I do, careful, the sound may be loud. It shoots. And so, as we can see here, it's calling uh, this shoot feedback and also an impact feedback on, on the object at the end. Um, and so the shoot feedback, you can see that's the MMF player. Uh, basically, the same thing, but better as MM feedbacks. So we have a list of feedbacks here. And uh, when I press play here, it plays them. You can see the progress bar, all the usual stuff. The cool new feature. So. Uh, one of the components of that player is a bloom feedback. When I play it, you can see the sky and basically the whole bloom on the scene is uh, boosted by 10 in this case. If I boost it to 100, well, now I get something much more visible. It's ugly, I know. It's just uh, so that we have something that we can remember. And so when I play the whole thing, well, the bloom plays a much bigger part, of course, in the thing. So with the old system, uh, you've changed that value at runtime and you're now like, well, I need to exit runtime and you know, I'm gonna lose that value, right? So that's still the case if you don't do one thing. So let's change it back to 100. And now we can press keep play mode changes, exit play mode, and we've kept that value. We would have kept everything else new feedbacks, remove feedbacks, uh, change of values everywhere. So this is a game changer. So uh, a good question would be, why, why didn't you do that sooner? That's, that's a very good question. So historically, uh, when I built MM feedbacks the first time, uh, Unity didn't offer a way to serialize polymorphic fields. And this changed with Unity 2019.3 and the introduction of serialized reference which opened new possibilities for the system. And that's why I had to basically rebuild the whole thing. So now we have two system MM um, feedbacks, um, the old one legacy system that still works. Uh, for this update 3.0, I put everything um, up to speed. So both have the same features more or less uh, in terms of feedbacks, at least same list of feedbacks. But from now on, MMF player is gonna be the new uh, system that that will be recommended. And in time, uh, the old one will, will fade away. The main reasons are that you would want to use MMF player over the old system is, well, first of all, that's, that's the one that will be maintained in the future, uh, but it's also more robust, more performant. Uh, you can see that there's no delay at all uh, when I select that list on some devices, some computers, some versions of Unity, this could take long on uh, previous versions. Um, it's also very efficient at runtime. And if you want full, full performance, there's also a performance mode uh, you can enable, in which case, well, you lose a bit of the uh, fluidity in the inspector, but uh, inspectors don't get redrawn as much. So uh, you get full editor performance if you enable that one. So. Big, big changes uh, in terms of robustness, uh, no more lost references, no more, all, the, all of that stuff is gone. Uh, more performant, lets you, well, keep runtime changes, uh, lets you copy your stuff, lets you have templates, presets. Um, you can now easily add and remove feedbacks from code, even at runtime. Uh, you get these fancier inspectors. Uh, you get stuff like, let's say I remove that light from here. 
I now get a warning saying, well, this feedback is a light feedback, it requires that you have a bound light here. And it also tells me, you know, where it is. So if I, if I just look, I can see the warning here, the warning here. I need to fix something in this drop down. I just put a light back, warning is gone. So that, that kind of help uh, pretty much all over the place. It's gonna, it's gonna be a big uh, improvement to workflows as well. Um, you also get uh, extra info in folded mode. So here we are, uh, you know, we, we can see the target animator for this animation. We can see the channel this, this bloom is emitting. Uh, we can see the light, which is light feedback is uh, the light it's piloting and so on. Um, new unified channel system. Uh, you can skip feedbacks to the end now. There's a new method for that. And last but not least, um, you can now customize the display color of each and every feedback. Should you do that? I don't know, but you can. So in this video, we're going to have a look at a bunch of stuff. Uh, first, how to create an MMF player and have it play. So it won't be as detailed as uh, the previous videos I've done on the subject because it's basically the same thing. Just wanted to uh, do it once at least uh, for players who may be starting with this video. If you are new to uh, Bill, you can just go watch old videos. Every time it's going to be about MM feedbacks, just mentally use the MMF player in its place. The videos are still uh, containing very much valid knowledge. So um, once we've seen that, we'll go over naming conventions. Uh, we'll see how we can migrate from MM feedbacks to MMF player if you have an already running project. Uh, we'll have a look at keeping runtime changes, templates and presets, a uh, bit of quality of life, uh, tidbits, and then a bit of scripting at the end. We'll see how we can modify feedback values at runtime. We'll see how we can add and remove feedbacks at runtime, and then we'll see um, how we can convert old feedback script that you may have lying around to the new system. So I'm going to start by creating a new player and going over the steps. I will do it quickly. Uh, if you want more details on how feedbacks work, there are existing videos, of course, using the old system, but they are still very much relevant. Uh, just make sure that every time you know uh, MM feedbacks is mentioned, you use an MMF player and the rest is going to be exactly the same. So I'm going to create a new object in my scene, uh, name it my best player. I'm going to go to add component here and usually I would have that list. So I type MMFP, first result will be MMF player and that's it. I have my player. I'm also going to go and uh, maybe select one of the cubes uh, that make my scene, duplicate it, uh, move it up, let's say to this position, and I'm going to make sure it's not static. Uh, and I'm going to probably use that cube here as um, some way of controlling something. I'm going to change. Uh, I'm going to change its material to yeah. Let's say this one, and maybe rename it my cube. All right, so now I have something to play with. So I'm in a scene where post-processing is already set up. Uh, that's also covered in other videos. Um, so I'm going to go and uh, add a new feedback, post-process, and uh, let the lens distortion. So of course, I could uh, do all these changes outside of play mode, but with the new system, uh, one of the cool features is I can do it at runtime. I'm going to go back to uh, the scene view. And so at any time, I can just press play here and change values until I find something that I like. I probably want to test that actually in game view. All right, let's say, let's say I like that one. Um, I'm also going to add a new feedback, maybe a transform. And let's try a squash and stretch. So uh, that's one of the new feedbacks added in 3.0. And this one, as you can see in the explanation here, it will modify the scale of an object on one axis while the other two axes are 
automatically altered to sort of maintain um, the mass of the object. So I'm going to drag my cube here. I'm going to press play. And you can see I get this, this warning here uh, saying, oh, you're playing this without having initialized it. So that will happen if you do things at runtime like that. It won't happen if you let uh, the system initialize when the scene starts. Uh, to prevent that, you can just press the initialize button here. And now when you play, you don't get any warning. So a uh, complete coincidence, but it actually, it's actually good. I, I, I wasn't sure what sort of feedback I was going for, but uh, this is now like a thing stomping the ground. Um, that's actually, that's actually good. So uh, let's say I like that. Um, I can just press play mode changes and you can see that I'm now outside of play mode. I've kept my new squash and stretch feedback that we've added at runtime. And if I press play again, everything uh, still works. So of course we could keep going and uh, add more feedbacks. We could add sounds to that. We could add much more stuff. This is already explained in other videos. So I'm going to stop here and uh, maybe for other tests during this video, we'll get back to that new uh, player. But basically, yeah, this is how you add a player to your scene. And before uh, moving on to the rest, I just wanted to go over some naming conventions. So um, this is the, the documentation, extremely zoomed in. And this is the MMF player component page, which you could have a look at if you're watching this video, because that's basically what I'm using to record it. So um, in the old system, we had MM feedbacks. That was the player class. And we had MM feedback. Notice the absence of S at the end. And this was the base class that all feedbacks inherited from. Um, so typically, you would have a class called MMM, MM feedback scale. And that class would inherit from MM feedback. In the new system, I try to make names a bit less ambiguous, uh, especially trying to avoid the confusion coming from the list has an S, the item in the list doesn't have an S. Um, so now we have the player, MMF player. So yes, there is an underscore. Um, I tried other things without an underscore. Everything is unreadable. I also don't like underscores. That was, that's sometimes. You have to make choices. So um, MMF player is the player. That's the thing that contains the list, uh, the sequence of feedbacks, and that's what plays it. And then the individual feedback, the base class is called MMF feedback. And each feedback afterwards uh, will be just called MMF scale, MMF squash and stretch, MMM, MMF, sorry, um, sound, and so on. So, if you're watching old videos, you will find these nouns floating around, these class names. Just make sure that you sort of mentally replace them with the new ones. Moving on, I'm in the field doc demo scene, and we're going to have a look at how we can grab an MM feedbacks, an existing um, player created with the old system, and turn it into an MMF player. So in this scene, I have this object scene with feedbacks on my dock, and there I have a bunch of MM feedbacks. So that's the old system. Uh, for some reason, let's say I have a project. I've been using field for a while. I want to keep using it. I want to migrate to the new system. Uh, thankfully, that's very easy. So uh, one way to do it is to simply unfold the settings panel here and click on the convert to MMF player button. And that's it, I, you've done it. So here you'll be able to see uh, like a log of all the feedbacks. Some of them uh, won't translate, for example, uh, the haptics one. So there used to be one haptic feedback. Field 3.0 includes our uh, nice vibrations 4.0, which is a massive um, refactoring of the whole nice vibration system. So there's no more uh, haptic feedback. Instead, there are uh, multiple. So now you have clip, continuous control, emphasis, preset. So these are one of the very few feedbacks that won't just translate. Um, pretty much the only one. I think um, the broadcast one might be an issue as well. 
and currently and for a short time i hope there is a cinemachine bug uh, that unity is working on fixing but that means that the impulse feedback uh, as you can see in that big warning just won't work should be fixed uh, i've been told by march uh end of march 2022 so if you're watching this video before that that fingers crossed well, otherwise if it's after that uh don't blame me uh, just waiting for the fix like everybody else so um as you can see uh, converting the feedback is extremely simple uh there are other options uh, i'm selecting another mm feedback here i can click on generate mmf player in which case you know the old feedback uh the old mm feedback remains but it just creates a new mmf player next to it on the same object uh, and likewise, you get the same type of logs. Um, and that's, that's pretty much it. So um, the cool thing with that is, uh, let's say I'm, I'm going to convert that one to an MMF player. So not generating a new one, but converting. And I'm also going to convert that one. So now all my feedbacks are MMF player. And if I press play and click anywhere, <laughs> all the feedback still play. And that's the beauty of that conversion system. Uh, you can see that here I had references for all the feedbacks. It has found the new MMF player automatically. I didn't have to do a thing. I just converted the feedbacks. It kept the references. Um, the reason for that, and I'm gonna open uh, my code editor right now to show you. There we go. So that's my duck class. That's the class that handles the duck and makes jump. So I had a bunch of feedbacks declared here, public MM feedbacks, jump feedback, landing feedback, denoise feedback. And you can see that I am calling them uh, when trying to jump and when landing. And these still work. That's because um, MMF player inherits from MM feedbacks just for the sake of not breaking everybody's projects. So you don't have to change anything in your code. It will just work. Uh, what you could do moving forward is doing something like, something like that. Um, and then in your code somewhere where it makes sense, you could do play feedbacks. But uh, you don't have to. Like you can just keep writing public MM feedbacks if you want. You will be able to slot in MM feedback and MMF player. There is nothing, uh, almost nothing, I would say, to gain from uh, declaring MMF players instead of MM MM feedbacks. That's a lot of MM to say in one video. Um, that's pretty much it. That's all you need to know about converting. Uh, all the MM feedbacks to MMF player. Let's go back quickly to keeping runtime changes. So I've shown that earlier. You press play. Once you're in play mode, uh, you make some change. So uh, let's say I put that to one. You can test, uh, test Quack. the whole thing. You press keep play mode changes, exit play mode, and you can see that this, uh, I think it was the yeah, remap intensity one, I put to one, it stays. Of course, uh, I could have added new feedbacks, I could have removed them, it would have kept them. Uh, another way to do that is to, uh, let's say I remove the animation one, I remove the sound, and I'm not sure which one I clicked. Yeah, there were two sounds. So I removed both sounds, and I'm gonna add a bloom. All right. Um, what I can do is, of course, I could go keep play mode changes, but I could also go copy all, exit play mode, replace all, and you can see uh, I get the value I had in my clipboard. Can be something you can also do. Uh, you don't have to do it in the same uh, player. You can go and create a new one, and you can go and paste all as new like that, and you've kept your your state. That can come from Play mode, it can be also in editor. 
So now that we've seen how we can copy stuff, either at runtime or outside of play mode, uh, let's see another improvement that comes with 3.0 and this new MMF player system. That's the ability to have templates or presets. They are different from, play, from prefabs. Prefabs are, you can create with MMF player just like you would any other object. You select it in your hierarchy, you drag it into your project view, and that's it, you've got a prefab. You can reuse that prefab in any object. You're used to that, it's normal Unity. Um, but you can also use these prefabs as storage. So now that I have this prefab anywhere in my project, I can go copy all. I can create in my scene a new MMF player, and I can go paste all as new. And that's it, I've got a head start now. I can start and build on top of that, modify even, and that's separate from my prefab, of course. The other thing I can do is, let's say I regularly create landing feedbacks, weird example I know, um, and I want to always start a new feedback, maybe uh, a new player with that kind of stuff, all of these. So I can easily do that by clicking that tiny button here, and this brings this window, and you can see that right now it's empty, it's a new project, and I can save that as a preset. And I'm gonna put that here, and I'm gonna name that my test preset dot preset. And you can see it appears here. Of course, I would store that in a folder named presets and so on. The cool thing is now that I have that, I can go and create a new player. And here I can recall that window by pressing that same uh, sort of slider button, my preset, and that's it. I've got a working player already plugged in. So of course I put that one into the same um, scene. So that's, that's like cheating a bit. If I create a new scene, you'll see how it goes, scene, yes. And I'm not gonna save that one. I'm gonna create a new object, create a new player, and I'm gonna recall my preset. So you can see that it puts everything it could, but some uh, now have missing references. And that's why I get these little warning signs. So I would just have to uh, put new particle systems, new uh, transforms that I could target uh, to move their position and so on. But like all the settings, all the timing, everything is still there for you to just replug. So now let's do some scripting. Uh, I'm in the field templates damage scene. I've removed most of the cubes, so we have one to play with. And what I want to do is create a class that at runtime is going to populate a target MMF player with some feedbacks, uh, let's say at least one, um, and set some of these properties. So to do that, uh, I'm going to start by creating a new class. I'm going to call that uh, my test class. And I'm going to open it. And I'm going to remove all that. And I'm going to start by declaring a new MMF player, target player. And I'm also going to declare a game object and say uh, target object. Okay, so the player is going to contain some feedbacks. Uh, one of them is going to pilot uh, the object, the target object. And to Simplify the test. I'm also going to declare a public bool uh, modify button. And I'm going to add a inspector button to it. And what this attribute does is it declare, it generates a button in the inspector. So when we press that button, we're going to be actively calling this modify method here. And to start things, I'm going to go with uh, target player .add feedback, And here I can specify the type of the feedback I want. So let's go with a scale feedback. So if I save this, go back to Unity, I'm going to go with a new object, uh, name it my player. 
going to add a layer to it, leave it empty. We're going to populate it with our script and going to create a new uh, empty object, put my test class on it, drag my player into the target player, drag my cube as the target object, press play. And we are at runtime, our player is empty. I press the modify button, go back to the player, and we can see we now have a scale feedback, but we're getting some warnings because it's not been uh, basically set up properly, it doesn't have a target. So if I were to play it, nothing would happen. So let's fix that and reopen our class. So if we, if we want to specify some settings, uh, we could grab the result of that add feedback and cast it, but uh, let's do things in a different way. Um, this time I'm going to declare a new uh, feedback and do something like this. So now that I have this scale reference, I can go scale.label equals every world. And I can also do scale dot um animate skill target equals target object dot transform and i could of course change any of these values uh but i'm going to stop there and i'm going to do uh target player but add feedback same method as before but different signature and this time i'm going to pass the scale feedback to it. and i'm going to go back to unity press play and try again. So my player is still empty. I'm gonna press modify. My player now has the hello world label. The um, scale target is set. If I press play, it works, except you can see that I'm getting this warning because I added stuff at runtime, didn't initialize. Let's fix that very easily. Um, and you can do that by going target player the initialization go back here do it again press play once you've pressed play modify your player press play here and that's it so we've at runtime we've created uh, a feedback added it to our player and we can now play it very easily so that's that's a nice powerful way of doing things. Of course, there are more methods uh, that you can use. You can remove feedbacks at runtime as well. Uh, infinite possibilities, really. Um, let me show you one last thing. So previously, if you wanted to modify a feedback, um, and now I realize that my naming is, is not great, uh, I'm going to rename some of the stuff here. Um, so this method and the button on our called create, and I'm going to create a new one called modify. And we're going to use that new method to actually modify the feedback we've created. Previously, feedbacks were mono behaviors. So if you wanted to grab one and modify its contents, you would just go and do a get component. Now, the feedbacks are not mono behaviors anymore. Uh, so you can't just go and do um, a get component. But thankfully, there are methods uh, that are fairly similar and that will let you do more or less the same thing. So in our modify method, let's say we want to grab or scale feedback on our player and we want to change the label uh, to something else. Why we would want to do that, nobody knows, but it's an example. So um, I'm going to go in that method and I'm going to go uh, scale feedback and I want to grab that on my target player and instead of going get component, I'm going to go with get feedback of type. And uh, so I'm looking for a MMF scale feedback and here I can specify, I don't have to, I could, I could stop there and this would work and it would return the first feedback of that type found on that player um, in this case it would actually work we only have one but uh, that's not super safe is it so uh, instead i can go and find it by label 
uh, I just so happen to know that this one is going to be named hello world and this is going to return the first one it finds um, that has a label that matches that if uh, that's not enough for me I could also go with uh, get feedback of type and I would have to store that into a list and I could then you know grab all the feedbacks of that type with that label uh, then I pass the list and so, so basically the same uh, very much the same logic I get component so now I have this um, reference to my feedback and I can just do skill feedback dot uh, label equals my new label I'm gonna save that and go back to unity so now I'm back in unity I press play again select my test object, uh, press the create button. So now I have my feedback and it, you can see it's hello world. I'm now gonna press my modify button, go back here, it says my new label. And of course I did that with the, uh, the most obvious uh, parameter but I could change you know, curves and values here just as easily. The last thing I would like to show you is how you can turn an existing MM feedback script uh, that you may have created into one that works on the new system. So to do that, um, we're going to actually do it with one of the actual feedbacks. So if you go into uh, fill MM feedbacks, MM feedbacks, feedbacks, that's a lot of feedbacks in that path, uh, you will find a number of uh, new MMF feedbacks and if you go into the legacy system, you find all the old ones. Uh, as I said, both will coexist for uh, the foreseeable future. And um, maybe we can go with, I'm, I'm looking for one that would be easy to set up. Actually going to go with the scale one. So uh, the first thing you want to do is duplicate your Feedback and you're going to get a lot of errors, that's normal. And I let's say I'm, I'm moving that one over there uh, for safe, safekeeping. So, um, first thing you want to do is rename that class. Uh, usually, I would go with MMF skill, match the um, naming convention, but I already have done that job, uh, and so I already have a MMF scale than you also do in your project. So uh, I'm going to go with MMF scale alt or something like that. And I'm going to open that class and I am going to name it scale alt here. Uh, and of course I want to rename it here, scale alt. And once that is done, um, I want to change that. So it won't be a MM feedback anymore. It will be a MMM, MMF feedback like that. And if I save that, you can see going back to Unity, most errors are gone, but I do have one error. And I think I have a few other ones uh, already found by Ryder here. The first one is here. So it says there's no method. Uh, to override and that's indeed the case uh, the signature of custom initialization has changed between um, the old and the new system and now it is looking as an owner for a MMF player so I just change game object to MMF player my error is gone I've done most of the job and if I scroll down uh, I can see that I may have some references to host MM feedbacks. That's now called owner. I'm going to copy that and have a look at it. Um, because we're not in a mono behavior anymore, we can't start coroutines like we used to, but we can do owner.start coroutine and use that as support for routine. And I can just do that every time I notice a coroutine thing. Like so. And I think I had a last error here. Is active and enabled is now just active like that. And if I save that, 
go back to Unity. All my errors are gone. I can go to my player here. I should be able to go to transform and find my scale art thing. And okay, interesting. So you can see that all my uh, fields have ended up in that inspector group here. And uh, that's my fault. I didn't pay attention. So um, what, I, what happens is that previously I would use headers to separate sections. Uh, now I'm using inspector groups. So what you can do is just uh, open any other feedback. Uh, let's go with a position. And we're going to copy stuff from there. So you can pick any other feedback, virtually one that you like. And we're going to copy that line here. And instead of that header, we're going to put that inspector group. I'm going to rename that to uh, scale alt. That's the name of the, the title of the section. Um, this I want to leave to true. The alternative would be uh, putting an attribute on each and every field. Don't want to do that. Um, here I can change the color. Uh, the number ranges till I think 139, if I'm not mistaken. Um, it's a, an index table of colors and I'm going to go with 30. Uh, and I'm going to say, yes, it does require setup. And what this field does is if in your, the insides of that group, there's something that needs setup, you want to put that to true. Um, and that's going to be sort of tied to these three lines. So you can just go to any feedback that has them. Not all of them require setup. Uh, but the ones that do, you can just copy these lines uh, and you can paste them. Usually in the old feedbacks, you will find this if Unity editor, and that's, that's where you want to put it. And what these lines do is uh, this one determines whether or not uh, the setup to be done. So in this case, I want to return true if my scale target is null. If it's null, then I want to display that warning. Um, and that's the uh, text that is going to be displayed here uh, next to the duration. And in this case, I want it to be the name of my scale target if it's not known. And lastly, there's the setup text, uh, which unless you want to be um, I can just do this. You can, of course, write any text you want. Yeah, it doesn't really matter. So if I go back to my feedback, you can say that now it says, hey, you need to set up stuff. Uh, and this feedback requires a animate scale target. So I can just put my damage cube in there, press play. And it works. So as you can see, even for a complex feedback, the scale feedback is big. Um, it only takes a few minutes uh, to update it. So I did 130 of them uh, in a couple of days. Uh, I wouldn't say it was a fun experience. I wouldn't do that every day, but it's done. Uh, and the new system is, is better. And unless you have that many, um, in which case, if you do have that many, please contact me. I want I want to discuss things uh, with you and I probably have questions, but um, if you don't have that many, then it probably shouldn't be too long. That's it. You know all there is to know about the MMF player system. Um, I hope you will like it as much as I do. I think it's a great improvement and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.